I think it truly embraces and embodies the illusion and the magic of the loving one the best. I think it nails what you're going for when you see, like, how are they doing that moment? It's the no hands moments. It's the, the ability to dance and have time and room to do things with your hands and your body while the wand is on its own course and orbit around your body. Um, so long story has a near and dear place in my heart. I also love that it kind of lets you do a little of everything. You can go from long to short to contact to really whatever style, all in a matter of seconds. It's, it's good for variety. Variety is the spice of life. It's my favorite. Terms that are important in long string. Uh, it's good to know what the anchors are. It's good to know what a non-anchor hand is. Um, I sometimes call it the off hand. There's also rocks in this instance. It could involve and describe um, wrapping a hand, a finger, a body, a neck, a, a, an appendage. Wraps can apply to any and all of those. Um, also, guiding and feeding the string is kind of an expression I use a lot. Um, that in some ways can really be any part of your body doing the guiding or the feeding of the string, but what I'm describing there is when, uh, I don't have this table. <laughs> what I'm describing is feeding, like say, through a cradle here, and a cradle for long string isn't necessarily the split string cradle move as much as it is this cradle that you create with your thumb and four, or point your finger. Um, it's an L for me, because it's my non your hand is my left hand. But what you've done here is created a nice little tension point and a temporary anchor uh, in this cradle. Uh, I go through temporary anchors a, a lot during long string. It's kind of what to keep your mind paying attention for when you're doing moves in long strings where point tension and the temporary anchor is being created on your body. Um, string management is super important in all of this. You're touching the string a lot, you're moving, you're controlling it, you're grabbing it out of the way. It, you touching the string is doing a lot of the work as opposed to just the motion that the short string is doing here in these moves. Tension is equally if not more important in long string as short string. Um, tension is affected by the weight and force motion, how fast you're swing, swinging things. And a um, lot of things to play with with tension, but you can change where that's coming from throughout your body. Um, scooping, uh, I do a lot of scooping in long string, and scooping involves uh, the act of scooping up the string into a hand wrap. Um, and sometimes it involves scooping the string up with your back of your hand, which is one of those guiding motions, and you scoop and guide kind of in the same scoop. Um, and then temporary anchors, of course, are moments like that where you've created this new anchor point. It would be at the back of your hand, um, pinch here, the back of my hand here. Um, wherever the wand is hitting that strongest point um, of tension is the temporary anchor for that moment. So string length in long string, it is important and it's also personal preference. Uh, you have three different anchors uh, for long string and uh, the string length is going to drastically affect uh, which one um, you're using. In long string we use three anchors primarily. Uh, it includes the hand anchor, the neck anchor, and the shoulder anchor. Um, for beginning, I highly recommend hand anchor. It gives you control of just how much string you're letting out into the long string and gives you kind of a stepping stone for string management so you're not overwhelming yourself with six feet of string right off the bat. You can go from this amount more than the wand to this amount to this amount in baby steps essentially. It's how I learned actually and I, I think it served me well in the long run to practice a lot my short string moves while just getting used to having the anchor point along my hand vary to turn it into long string at any given notice. Um, second anchor is a shoulder anchor. And let's see, switch over real quick. Shoulder anchor involves taking the big loop. It's usually one big loop all the way through as opposed to having that finger loop and swivel at both the end. It's one big loop. You're going to stick your arm through for shoulder anchor, take the string, drape it behind the back of your neck, 
And then you have created the ability to create a second tension point and anchor over your cradled, cradled string. Now this is a little, a little bit uh, much to control at this length. So what I would normally do is actually let it drape over the back of my hand and scoop it up until I have a more equal string line. But that is shoulder anchor, just off the bat. Um, so neck anchor is the third one that I used in long string. It gives you the most flexibility, but it also changes what you need to pay attention to with the momentum. Like, say flexibility for like hands and how much hand strength you have. Um, so neck anchor is literally just sticking your head exactly that in the loop there. So simple lines for after even scratch it was doing it. Just put your head in there, it's there, you're good to go. Um, but that also requires utilizing both of your hands to create new anchors and tension points for that. So when I say starting with um, a hand anchor is ideal, that is because this is there's a lot more going on when you do neck and shoulder anchor to pay attention to. Um, there's also some reasons like how and why I pick a, a string length and which anchor I'm using. For example, the hand anchor I love if I'm in a small space, a crowd. Uh, if I'm on a stage, I definitely learned wanding while I was uh, performing go-go dancing. So there's a lot of instances where you need to be able to <laughs> dodge things, dodge somebody on the stage, dodge somebody right below the stage, it, dodge the deco. You never really know what the situation's going to hold. So I also like having the finger loop just in case something got sweaty or I got in the zone and suddenly my hand wrap turns into all it's holding it on is that finger loop, which it's not a, impossible for a hand wrap to just become a loop and fly off. So in certain instances that makes more sense. Um, I also find that a hand anchor allows for a little bit more control. So if you're doing a hand anchor, you'll have the ability to really quickly reel that in in a big crowd. If you're uh, around a lot of people, I mean, they aren't paying attention, but you are. Um, that will give you definitely a quicker chance to grab it, bring it away from the person walking past. Um, the string length is also going to change. I mentioned, uh, mentioned that. The hand anchor I usually leave as my shortest, um, or at least with the finger loop, I leave it as my shortest string length. Um, for example, that one ends up being roughly, and for those reasons I mentioned, um, being the short space, the smaller spaces, and more control, um, I usually use this anchor if I also want to bounce between long string and contact wanding. Um, this is definitely preferred for that because of the control and the ease of less string being tangled. That being said, I have this at a much shorter length than a lot of my long string setups, which is just this. It literally, when you cradle it, puts your hand right behind the wand, the ability to float it, but it is only about my wingspan. So, that's the shortest one if I need to dodge people. Um, if you want a little bit more than the bare minimum for a long string setup, I recommend a little bit longer. Uh, this is my longest setup. Um, this one I will typically use a neck or shoulder anchor kind of. Uh, kind of deal. Uh, because I'm using the neck or shoulder anchor, I'm using more string because I actually have to wrap it around thicker body parts than what my hand and my wrists are. Um, so when you are deciding what length you're doing, look at your body shape, your body type. Um, if you are going around uh, more body, you're going to need more string uh, for body wraps and stuff. Um, or otherwise it will limit just how many times you can do those moves. So I know for a shorter, shorter anchor like the hand anchor one, I can only go around so many times. But if I have a setup, uh, my longest setup, on my hand as well, just like the finger loop one, I can do the same moves and go around my body far more times than on that setup. Um, but like I said, the longer setup here, if I were to literally do the same thing as if it were a finger loop here, it actually comes all the way out here. So what I've got is the cradle and then inches, like six inches above my wand of string. So then I've got the short string setup, which frankly, at this point, I actually have to wrap some of the string and manage it a little bit better to, to get that to work. It's a lot. But the second I put it over my shoulder, I then have a little bit more control over what to do with strings. So I can hold it away behind here. Um, the other the other long string is just a little, little bit shorter than this one. Um, it's kind of a, 
attempt to be more mindful of space when I still want to do a shoulder or a long string anchor. Um, and without the finger loop, they will get a little bit more tangled as you're rotating. Um, I know a couple people who can actually count, keep track. I'm not one of those people, so I tend to, if I'm practicing, you know, you just accept eventually you're going to have to unwrap it, undo it, and kind of stick your finger between the string and loosen it up there. Um, that being said, that's actually part of why I leave a finger loop on that swivel, because of a smaller stage style performance when I might have to just go for 15 minutes straight. You know, it's not a, not a choreographed kind of thing, it's just to get up and go to the DJ. Um, those are great instances to still have a finger loop. Uh, attached to the base of the swivel because I can extend this wand all the way out if it's tangled and when it's in its longest full rotation I can actually give it a moment and like take my hand and just do a little wiggle because that tension in the wiggle will start to release and get rid of that that twist. So that's the three main hand anchors in string length, the Y and each, and kind of what to keep in mind when you're picking which one you want to use. Um, the other factor and the last factor to really deciding which Y, how of your, your long string one is the weight. You've got daylight, uh, the, the, the feather weight, um, feather light day wands, super tiny, skinny, skinny, skinny wands. Um, and just like this one from Float Toys. Uh, the float toys went super skinny. This is actually what I learned my long string on. It can be done. Um, I have a lot of love for this wand. It, it takes a little bit more delicate moves, slower, much more gentle things. Everything just needs to be more delicate and gentle with this wand, just generally. Uh, but that being said, it's beautiful. It gives you a lot less work to send the body and keep the momentum going. Um, this will have problems in the wind. It's just so light, it's very easy to knock off. Same with if you are moving it really fast, which you run into with a long string wand is you're going against the wind with a lot more wind resistance in those bigger rotations around your body. Um, problem with that, uh, you've got different wands can handle different speeds. So you kind of got to get used to maybe even what style of music you want to dance to changing which weight of the wand you're using. A super heavy wand is a whole nother style of momentum and uh, mindfulness because it's going to drop lower, hang lower, easily hit the ground more um, compared to a lighter wand. But a lighter wand, if you go too fast, next thing you know is off balance. Um, and that really goes for any wand. There's a sweet spot to keep it, uh, keep it perfectly balanced. Even a, a balanced and short string like LED wand has a tendency to need some adjusting um, because of the, the change of the center of balance when you add the string length. Um, so it's something to be mindful of. It will happen. It happens all the time. Most of the best wands have a, a little bit of tweaking that they need for the long string. When you're starting your long string journey, I highly recommend hand anchor just off the bat. Um, but that involves learning a whole other thing, how to wrap it around your hand. Uh, it's super simple, it's a little, sounds a little bit more daunting, especially if you're considering uh, cutting off circulation of your hand. Um, to avoid cutting off circulation of your hand, practice just wrapping it like this wand, just hanging around, no tension from the wand or the string. Um, finger loop, or, or one big loop, either or. Um, finger loop, what I would suggest when you've got it down from your hand, is to take it to underneath of your thumb, and then wrapping it from the base of your thumb to the back of your hand and around your hand and line your wrist initially. And then you're gonna maybe go up and over your hand so that it's actually across your palm through your thumb. And wrapping that a few times, generally keeping your hands like spread wide. Um, by doing that, you're, you're keeping the blood flow going and the restriction a little bit looser. So now that you've kind of got a feel for what's comfortable, remember when you're wrapping, you want to keep your fingers free and your hand free because that's actually going to do a lot of the controlling of where your wand's going, changing directions, um, a lot of things. So keep your hand free. If you are in fact doing this for not a finger loop specifically, but perhaps just as a wrap, I can also just put it around my palm like so and then take the same kind of concept down through the bottom of my thumb, both of those strings, and just wrap it around. And wrap, and wrap, and wrap, and wrap, and wrap, and wrap, and wrap. 
and wrap again. So now I wrapped around my hand. Same thing, keeping my palm like spread out nice and loose. You're gonna have to be used to all wanting, wrapping that and finding the sweet spot for the tension. The faster you're wrapping, the tighter it's going to get. And it can get a little tricky sometimes. And many times I get tangled just from doing a wrap and ending up in the wrong finger in the wrong spot. Um, comes with lots of practice and just getting used to where you're wrapping as you're going. Um, but part of this wrap is the scoop, where you dip your palm under the string and scoop it up in that cradle of your anchor hand. Um, that's also how you add more string to this, is kind of reverse scoop. It's a little drop, it's a little, a little flick of the wrist. Same way that this is a scoop. Now, the tension in this, if it's a, ten, a more tense string, you're going to be able to scoop that a lot faster. So say, for example, I'm mid, mid wand in here. I can scoop with a loose string because my non-anchor hand is creating a second tension point. I can scoop it up here. Or if I'm wanding, I can just scoop. Maybe I can scoop over my head, wrap it around my wrist. I can find a way to scoop and create that wrist wrap, hand wrap, at any point during my flow. So now that we've got it wrapped around your hand, you're going to want to just practice going around your head. Because what's going to happen if you don't move your hand, it can just unwrap all the way. We can let it keep unwrapping, or at some point in this, we're going to let it unwrap. But when it unwraps the back of your palm here, we're going to let it unwrap and catch the back of your thumb. So. I've got it catching my thumb, it's going to go around my hand again, and now I've created a counter direction. So if I'm unwrapping, unwrapping, this should just keep unwrapping all day, but if I catch it, we've now started to wrap it back up. By catching it on the back of your thumb like that, you've created that reverse to keep it going around your hand without running out entirely using up your entire hand wrap. So that's a great thing to practice, just going around, wrapping, and going once or twice in front of you, around. Sometimes, oh, excuse me. Uh, let it loose, do it a scoop. You're gonna notice that if you don't keep the tension, the wand's going to start to drop. Here's where using the cradle comes in handy. So I've got this, it's kind of drooping. I'm going to want to take my cradle hand, my non-anchor, current non-anchor hand, and actually scoop it into this cradle. It's almost, it's almost as if I'm guiding my hand up the string and creating that anchor point behind the thumb in the cradle. And that allows me to stop the wand, stall the wand, change the direction of the wand, pick it up. But no matter what I'm doing, I can stick my hand in there and actually grab and feed the string through that cradle all the way to my hand. Once I've got it to that point, I can reset, I can wrap my hand back up and go back to short string, whatever the case may be, by creating that little feeding cable, you've got a lot more control and ability to slow down and change what your wand is doing. Getting started in neck anchor and shoulder anchor is a little intimidating to so have a ton of extra string. I have a couple ways that are my favorites because um, ideally you want to start off the bat with the short string so that when you are wanding the, the long string dance and illusion becomes a surprise, uh, whether it be a surprise shortly thereafter or a minute or two in. Um, so if we're going to just do a neck anchor, I'm going to go ahead and just stick my head in the loop here, and now I've created point tension behind my neck. Now, there's a lot of string. This is not quite a thing I can just wand like this. This doesn't work. So what do we do? We want to make that a lot shorter. I like to take an extra scoop and let the wand, so here's the string, it's draped just in front of my neck. It goes over my shoulder, behind my elbow, or it's over my arm behind my elbow, excuse me. And then I just let it wrap around my forearm until it gets to my wrist. But I don't want to wrap it around my wrist right here too many times, that spot. I want to let it wrap once there, and then actually come up and closer to the bottom of my palm and in 
see my palm area. Remember when we're wrapping, keep your hands spread so it won't get so tight. But it doesn't take long before we used up all that extra strength really quickly because what we do, we created all these extra tension points. I did a very bad workout. It was like, I did a bad job. Um, you've got this tension point here, wraps it all the way around, and you've now gotten rid of all this extra strain, and you have exactly what you need for your short string wanding. But from here, all you need to do is send it around your body and let your hand out with the scoop and drop method. But sometimes you don't want to go so fast, or maybe you want to reel it in real quick and you still have all of the string. What I just did, as it was coming around, I could tell I was about to hit some stuff here. I actually let my hands grab it. So I was like going like this. I put my hand up and into one side of the string, where it was coming from, which slows it down, but also cuts this length from being all the way out here to within hand's length. So I grabbed it. Let's see if I can do it again. So I could do this in slow motion. So go all the way around. It was in here, wasn't it? Okay, so let's go around. All the way. Oh, oh, it's, it's loose. I grab, and now I can pick it up, stop it, add it to a cradle here. I just have to pull it with this hand to bring it within length of grabbing it from this cradle, which is creating another temporary thing. What I've got here is a whole lot of string management where I have to have two points. A tension, one tension here to create what's the tension create put in wand, and a second point here so that I'm in control of where all this string is going behind the wand, behind the hand. What I can do is let it go loose, but if I let it go loose, I've got a whole lot of string just kind of dangling here, which is really easy to see if you get caught in the wand. Um, so what I want to do, keeping this tense here, I might even take this, start scooping it, so that I've created, when I let go of this, an already available, ready to go, second temporary anchor. Um, so then I could just continue without my short string. And if I want, I can just translate to this second cradle of my other hand. Now I have a anchor point behind my hand. And I can just go about um, unwrapping them if I want. And then I could just you know, do a body wrap. Hand wrapping, hand wrapping. We're doing the thing, doing the wraps. We can make sure that while we're doing this, we're kind of practicing where our where the string is feeding as the anchor point. So when I do this now, I've got it behind my thumb. So that means that it has to hang over my knuckle to create the wand effect. It's not the most ideal spot of my hand, is it? So what I prefer is maybe one more scoop and I put it onto the back of my hand, where I can feed it through any of whichever fingers are most comfortable. I can feed it through, and then drop it down here. And it's almost like I have a finger with it So while you're wrapping, you can even, I could just wrap that single finger up. Mind you, this is pretty easily made of wand, but kind of doesn't feel that great. So I'll unwrap that. But for example, you can pick and choose where those wraps go. You can mid-wrap, like wrap some fingers, whatever feels comfortable. Get used to wherever they fall being about the feeling of creating that tension when it's moving around you because mid-flow you might scoop and it might just go between finger. It doesn't really matter the specifics of which finger, you just gotta remember to be creating that point of tension the whole time and creating that temporary anchor um, no matter where the wand falls. It's a lot easier in my opinion to actually flow with a broader goal in mind. If you just know you're going to wrap that, make sure that when it comes down here, it's ready to go in short string, then that's the goal. If your goal is, oh, but I have to make sure it's in between these two fingers, you've kind of narrowed it down to what you, little specifics that you're going to focus on. And I think it's about having a bigger arsenal in your pocket than a specific trick. It's kind of the whole entire move and feeling that you're looking for. Um, so we've got We've got our rotation going. Remember to feel for the tension here. Remember to feel for where, how much string you have left, when to guide it back the other direction. I'm definitely a little loud up here, I think. There we go. Um, you're definitely looking for that. You're looking for the back of your hand in some of these cases. To like here, 
this temporary anchor point at the back of my hand is what's stopping and slowing the wand from continuing this direction and then sending it back in that direction. It's not my hand grabbing the string, it's not me like dropping it and pulling it, it's actually that temporary anchor going around and catching it and being at the point. I can even do things with the hand wrap there where it lands and lands on my finger and that finger can then guide for some long string. So we've hand wrapped around, hand wrapped around, we've got all this down your short string. When we unwrap, we want to actually wrap it around our body. So that can be done two ways. Usually it's going to be done taking your hand and actually moving where the string and the wand are in their rotation around your body here. So your anchor hand is actually going to guide where you're placing it on your body. The second way to do that is actually to guide the body into the location during your flow and spinning of where you're, you're picking up the wand. And if your body is actually already grabbing, it then serves as the anchor point that is guiding where on this plane up and down your wand is actually traveling. I can take it, lift it, place it on my neck. But, what happens if I'm down here and I jump in to that height? Then I can actually just place myself pretty much in the wand's path without dramatically changing that. Or, I can be down here, place the wand around my body wrap, and then I can come up with it. Now, the wand has changed its levels and height entirely. Woo. That being said, it's all wrapped here. I'm going to send this wand behind my back to catch it in this cradle. I didn't actually have enough. So make sure when you chew this, you have a little bit more string. Our goal here is to have a you know, generous amount on either side. Uh, but not too much, because we're going to practice this, this much string before you're comfortable and to add a little bit more. Um, so from here, I've got the string. Around my back, anchor hand, non-anchor hand, has the cradle, the wand. I'm just going to send this non-anchor hand, I'm going to send the wand back. I'm going to let it guide around my chest again, pick it up. Or just going to worry about a simple pickup, you can just scoop it with your hand. Um, if you're uh, feeling comfortable with it, you can scoop it up with the back of your hand here. And that way it falls between your fingers and down like a finger loop would. But we've caught the wand, which was the goal here. So catch the wand and actually just send it back around. It's going to keep going around. You're going to guide it and pick it back up with your wand in your hand. So this was great to practice. Picking up, dropping, putting back in, going around, picking up, dropping. To expand on doing this, Feel for where your anchor hand is placing it. If you go too low, you're going to hit the ground. I uh, definitely do that all the time. Um, when it's coming around your body, the second it touches your body, you can actually start to scoop and guide and feed that string. So the second it hits here, I can scoop my finger in and actually reach. I'd be slowing down and controlling that slow down the whole time. So when I release it, it comes back around. So as soon as it's hit my body, my body is already starting to control this right here. And then I can take over with my hand and pick it up. Any point in your body when you're doing this move, when you're doing this around your body, feel for where it's hitting your body at. Because those are all creating temporary anchors and points of tension. Those points of tension are key for direction, momentum, force, slowing it down, stopping it. Uh, it's super useful for all of those. So when you're hitting those points, they're actually helping guide the wand. So I can, for example, when I'm sending this wand back and around the body, I can step into it, or with and follow it, and that both slows it down or sends the force and momentum. If I ascend this night and my body hips and turns with it, I'm actually adding with my back there a little bit of extra force. 
So now I've caught it here. Here's a sudden, another great example of a point of tension. It's temporary, but it's an anchor point for this move. Because it's just draped over the back of my arm or the back of my hand here. It's just sitting there, but again, I can go up and down with it. It's created this tension point, but it also runs back here. So there's two points here and here. That way, all of this is ready to be a force of momentum with the tension helping propel this all the way around my body. So when I let go and send this, the back of my arm is actually going to be the force that finally sends with my shoulder, sends this the rest of the way. So sure, I can let go, but I can take that arm and help spin it around. I can come here as well and help pinch with the back of this arm and create a different point of tension from this side, which involves scooping under the traveling wand as it comes up and around you, scooping up and into the wand, which means it goes up and over on this side as opposed to the outside. And then just scoop in my hand spins, go back to the basics. All right, so what about combining these hand and neck wraps? You go around in the direction, you're feeling adventurous and you're getting the hang of what that feels like to wrap and unwrap and scoop it behind your thumb. We can follow the wand. We can rotate and go the opposite direction of the wand, but it will wrap a little bit faster. Just little things you can add to something as simple of while you're wrapping, which could just look really boring if you don't add, you're just standing there, and it's going around. Okay. That, that in and of itself is getting the momentum down, the feeling down. But then once you're in that, it's, it's a good way to spice it up by moving your body with it as well. The next thing you can add on to that, we went over body wraps before, um, but we can also add a neck wrap to this. So as I've expanded all this string, I've got lots of extra, I can let it hit the back of my neck and I can come over here and catch it back in my non anchor cradle. And then I can release it, send it to the front, come back around, and I can use that anchor hand, or not anchor hand, to catch in whichever way I want. I can catch it with my anchor hand when it comes back around on the front side again, because um, I can actually lift and scoop with the back of my hand there. Uh, doing that with your hands and the back of your arms is really good for making it look like you're not using your hands. It adds to the illusion. Um, and it's just a nice, a nice change instead of looking at the grab and string. Um, so yeah, send it back around your neck. But doing neck wraps, be extremely careful and mindful of how many of these wraps I have. So I could go, I don't think I can go one more. Yeah, see? So we go that one more and you run into the risk of, well, you can do like a stationary perch here when there's momentum. You tend to whack yourself in the face if you do one too many wraps. So uh, there is definitely a learning curve when you're doing neck wraps. So be careful of how long your, your string is. And um, over time, practice, you will learn how many body wraps and neck wraps each string allows and, and what method. This is a little tight. I could have, since I did one too many wraps, um, I do have a lot of loose string here, which is good for getting back out of it. It's when this is tight on both ends, you're kind of uncomfortable and you need to get out fast. Um, the heavier this wand, the more uncomfortable a neck wrap would be, so, so be careful with that. And uh, the delicate nature of guiding the string onto your, your body during this, this wrap is going to affect how tight that actually gets. So like a heavier wand, if you're going to want a very slow and guided neck wrap to sit it, even maybe a little bit lower than this so that it's not quite, not quite so thick. Um, but like I said, this is going to be that dangerous territory of how I just whack myself in the face. It is a good starting point if you're starting your flow, though, because here I have this perched, because there's so much tension, I have this perched, perched wand. Now, I can't really perch my elbow because it's so little string. But from here, I can duck out. Actually, it might even be too short. From here, my best bet is to actually lift this up into my cradle, send it around my body, and keep unwrapping. Now, as you see, I'm kind of doing a little wiggle there because on each wrap, I wasn't using my hand to keep it going. I was actually using a little bit of my neck and my body to keep the momentum so it didn't hit the ground. <laughs> so that was my word of caution. When you're wrapping, be very ready to when you're coming. Excuse me. 
be ready to, when it's going around your body, catch it, be ready to catch with your anchor hand, or depending on how, whichever way you want to, you're not anchor hand. Either way, there is a, a feeling that you're looking for as soon as it comes across where your hands, shoulder, whichever anchor, temporary anchor point wants to grab it. So pretty much the second it touches your body in whichever point, you can start to grab and create that second tension. So now what? Your hand wraps all the way until you can't take it anymore. Well, this is great for jumping from long string to short string. Um, and even if, say, you're going around the body, you're going around the body, and you drop it, and here you're like, oh no, it's all wonky, like, what do I do, what do I do? You actually, because there are two anchor points here, you can use that second anchor point to no matter where, where in your rotation the wand is, is doing its thing, to scoop it up, create this pinch between your hands, between your fingers, and now I can actually guide, while wrapping this hand back up into short string, guide this wand. Now this is perfect for, um, you know, if it's just, it's all sorts of wacky, it's out of, it's out of control, I can do some, I can guide it right into some flowers, isos, um, it depends. But either way, while it's wonky, you can take that time to scoop, while this is another tension point, scoop all this loose string, and then you can just use it exactly like it would be a short string. You can then change it into contact moves, whichever your heart desires once you've wrapped it up. And this comes in handy once you've learned all this hand wrapping. It comes in handy to actually have this something you're used to, because then you can actually control and guide your contact wand at faster speeds, different rates, and with a little bit more precision and control because you're used to quick wraps, you're used to scooping really fast, and you can do it with just one finger as opposed to your hand, and change the speed, the tension, and the quickness, which you can do certain contact moves. Of course, it's stuck in there. Whee!